What's up everybody? It's Carpo. I'm gonna spit some random nonsense, but as usual going into this video I have very little forethought. I kind of decide what I'm gonna talk about within 30 seconds before I turn the camera on. I thought I'd mention that because somebody the other day said that they appreciated my videos and they said it must get difficult after all the videos I've made to think of new subjects each day. And uh, I guess I never really thought of it that way. I never realized that people might think of it that way, that, that I actually have to think of something. But the reality is that I don't. The only reason I make videos is because I have thoughts I want to share. So rather than trying to think up things to share, I have things on my mind. And I think about a lot of stuff. I think about, you know, my own motives and my own behavior and how I'm treated and how I treat others. I think I've probably learned more on my time on the internet than, you know, than dealing with people face to face just because people give their true motives and their true natures. It's kind of like, um, think of uh, the internet as the alcohol of the or maybe the, maybe it is the opiate of the masses. Uh, you know, they talk about. Um, uh, you remember hearing that term, the opiate of the masses. But what about the alcohol of the masses? In other words, when you're drunk, you say things you don't mean, or you wouldn't say to other people. But online, you can do it. It's kind of like the um, road rage syndrome. But it gives me a glimpse of what's really going on in people's minds, and uh, not only that, but in my own mind, such as, you know, I'm always trying to leave on a good note. I had someone, you know, we got in a disagreement about various topics the other day. This happens all the time, you know, I have a few people that are usually disagreeing with me about one thing or another on various videos, and uh, I always try to leave on a good note, say, you know, we each have our own thoughts. It usually, it usually ends with someone either attacking my character, the fact that I use drugs, and one guy attacked my uh, avatar making fun of the way I looked, you know, that kind of stuff. When, when, when all else fails, attack the person, which is fine, because I've learned to accept that and understand that people, you know, it basically is like throwing their hands up. You know, if you're having an you know, important discussion with someone and then they tell you that you know, something about your behavior where they obviously maybe went through and looked at your channel, looked at your videos and said, uh, like somebody said earlier, something about a nitrous hit. Uh, I mentioned something about how, you know, I, something about my family and they said, you do nitrous and you have a family? How irresponsible. And they went on to, you know, list this entire, like, huge long comment about how bad nitrous is, you know. And I just kind of like, duh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're all well aware of how harmful certain things that we do are. But uh, it's not like I'm sitting at home doing nitrous every day. What I, my point being that the person must have seen the video where I talked about nitrous and decided that they were going to make that the priority of their conversation rather than the subject at hand. So by learning how people do these things, you start to see if people do it online, they do it in daily life, they do it, you know, families and friends. And, uh, you know, I've experienced it so many times firsthand with uh, people that I know personally that, you know, you get into a disagreement and um, perhaps, for example, you tell a person, you know, it really upset me when you, when you said this to me. And they say, yes, but you said this to me a long time ago. That kind of stuff. Or, you know, well to somebody you might be better off if you did this or that you know and that's just my opinion and they say yeah but you don't do that you should do this you know and it's always deflected back on the other person but by doing that and observing that and seeing how people are it's, it's good because it gives you a, a good way to, to, to know how to opt out of certain discussions and not even waste your time with them and uh, I've also learned that I don't really like to debate or converse about things that I just am not interested in which can be offensive to some people because, you know, they might feel like they're not getting a chance to talk, which is, you know, people in daily life, you know, family and friends, you know, and somebody might start talking about something, I'm just, 
you have to pretend you're interested for a while, but you know, at a point you just say, hey, you know, I'm just, I don't really have anything to say about that subject. An example would be if somebody, uh, for example, my mom sometimes talks about commercials, television commercials, and says, have you seen this commercial? And then she'll follow up with, no, oh, that's right, you don't have TV. And then she'll proceed to tell me the commercial. And she knows I don't care and I don't want to hear the commercial, but she tells me anyway. And I listen to be courteous, you know, because, you know, you can't just tell people to shut up. In other words, what I'm saying is that we have conversations that are uncomfortable or maybe they're about subjects we're not interested in, but we have to at least show a little bit of explanation or interest in why we're either into that or not into that. I just want to see people conversing on a level that uh, both people walk away kind of laughing, saying, <laughs> we're all a bunch of idiots and children inside. And it's okay. It's okay to know that and to admit that. I know that there are a lot of folks who would disagree and say no, that you know, they feel mature and on top of the world, and that's great. I've felt that way before too, but like I was talking with someone the other day about that when I when I made a video about is ignorance genius, you know, and this and of course I was being symbolic with that, but what I meant was that um, you know, not having all the facts, sometimes you're better off only because what you find is that having knowledge and having awareness of certain things, it, it brings the onion up. The old saying that I love so much, that every, you know, knowledge is like the onion. Layer upon layer you peel to find, layer upon layer behind. And as one of my subs said earlier, he said, and uh, as you peel into that onion, it makes you cry sometimes. <laughs> I, I loved that. That was great. That was from Kenneth. That was a good one. And, and it's so true. We peel away the layers and we do cry, but there are more and more layers. So every question basically becomes a dendritic pattern into other questions. You look at knowledge like a fractal. Okay? It's that simple. That's the way I see it. You, know? you look deep into something and then it opens up into a whole new realm. And uh, therefore, when you have, say, 10 things that you think are the reality of life, and then you start studying those things, they become 100, and then they become 1,000. And the next thing you know, you have delved into every single aspect and corner, into the deepest occult teachings, to the highest religious you know, thoughts, to the hermetics, you know, into various conspiracy theories and 9-11 and chemtrails and reptilians and orbs and, and, and aliens and you go on and on and on down the list and, and you go from the things that are just you know the what ifs all the way down to the solids like you know uh, science you know scientific facts and then you get into quantum physics which basically throws science a lot of science not out the window but uh, a lot of scientists avoid any type of quantum mechanics because it's basically a dead end uh, theory <laughs> dead end uh, field because there's and I don't mean that, you know, offensively to those who are in it. I think it's a phenomenal field. It's just one that we can only explain so far because with things like the double slit experiment and, uh, you know, you start studying into these things, the way that sound affects water and cymatics and Dr. Emoto experiments. I mean, God, I've learned so damn much in my life, you know? And, and the reason why I, I'm... I don't talk about certain subjects and that I stick to certain things is because I've thrown a lot of it out the window. It's all become garbage, fodder. I, I found out that a lot of it's a waste of time. Like, uh, you know, the fellow that wanted to have a video chat about, you know, about chemtrails and stuff like that. And I, I just said, honestly, I, I'm, I'm not interested because it's not in my uh, interest center. <laughs> it's just my brain doesn't want to talk about it because... I have my theories about it, I've done my own research, it doesn't mean that it's right, it just means that it's something that I believe that what's the resolution? And this is, so I've come to the, con con the conclusion that everything has to have a mission statement. So if a person were to say, well, what's your mission statement? I would say to improve my values, to prove my integrity, to prove my outlook on life, and to find patterns of thinking that are suitable for a human in a crazy, mixed up world that we can live happily, but live honestly. And that's my mission statement, it's that simple. 
so I share my thoughts with people in hopes that, um, you know, I can express myself and, and, and relate to people that understand what I'm talking about. That it's not about being asleep or awake. It's not about how much you know or don't know. It's about how much do you know yourself and how honest are you with your life. And uh, it can be painful, but but it's totally worth it. <laughs> I, I, I love life more every day because of it. And this is why I've chosen to avoid certain things. This is why I'm not involved and in, interested in these types of fear campaigns. It's, it's because the awareness is always there, you know. I'm prepared for any disaster. I've got my, you know, apocalypse food, and, and, and I'm always got one eye open looking to the sky, you know, looking to the sun, watching to see if anything happens. But I refuse to live my life thinking about it every day and worrying because life's too short to worry. <laughs>